Yeah, always when I'm leaving, they're like, oh, by the way, the green room. I'm like, what the fuck, the green room? Fuck you! I would hide in a bathroom stall and eat a burger. I know. <laughs> nice. Is that good over there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, language, do you want it to be clean? Hell no. Oh, NC-17. Oh, oh we sweet. Love it. We can, we can leave um, it out, but for... Let's see here. Pretend we're testing your tits. Oh. Are you trying to get video or <laughs> let's get it on here? Yeah. I think it's in. Right if it's video, I can do real tit right adjusting. Now, so. Let's get them back yeah. where they yes, video. Okay. Back where God <laughs> intended them to be. Yeah, at my neck. <laughs> at my neck. God always wanted them uh, here. So is this one alright? You yeah. want to like this? Is this? Hi. Hi. Good question. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> um, I would say Jennifer has a more angular face. Um, she also has something called resting bitch face that if she's not making expression, she looks like a cunt. It's a rarely uh, a recognized <laughs> medical condition that's getting more and more popularity. I also have things. Or like, like we call the, the snaggletooth yeah. jewel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is very sexy because I can't. <laughs> yeah, he's saving stuff. I love my fangs. My dentist hated them. He said I had an ugly smile. And he said, don't you want them taken out so you can be beautiful mm -hmm. like your sister? No. I have a birthmark here and one here, but you can't see it anymore. And I used to do my eyebrows like Vampira, but with the bangs, nobody can tell. Yeah. Jen's the nicer twin. She's the one you want to talk to. If you want to talk about weird things like radical feminism, about cutting off your vagina and sewing it up, that, that then you talk to me, man. She's the loud one, too. Yeah. I underdressed had, and over loud. That, yeah, I was going to say you're underdressed and over loud. My favorite kind of woman. We're wearing the same outfit. Mine Just is saying. slightly longer. Well, it was, um, we were proudly failed actresses and remain so. And I, because of the resting bitch face, I always got the really bitchy kind of roles. And because Sylv looks sweet, although she's really not. I'm sweet. She always got like the girlfriendy role. So we wanted to give each other the complete opposite kind of role that we usually get. But as a result of it, people thought that Sylv was a badass and that I was a geek. And it's like, well, no, we're basically both of those things at the same time. Yeah. Tarantino, definitely. Mary Heron, mm -hmm. she's one of my favorites. Um, uh, Eli Roth a lot. Dario Argento, Takashi Miike, Lars von Trier. He's my, he's my jam. I love his shit. My sister likes this guy called Joss Sweden. As long as you don't say Joss Sweden, I have to rip your fucking tits off. Make so, them where they are! She's the Lars and I'm the Joss and they fucking hate it when someone says, yeah, I love Joss Sweden. He's my favorite. It's like, oh, you imbecile. It's Joss. <laughs> I really like Ricky Bates. He's amazing. If you've seen Excision, uh, it's a it's a psychosexual medical horror, and we toured uh, American Mary and Excision together. And I was like, Oh my God, you're like a boy, me! How fantastic! But he's seriously fucked up in a nice way. Oh, and right now Gareth Evans and Timo, I can't even attempt to pronounce your last name. Oh, They're fucking incredible! Yeah, Ben Wheatley is amazing. If you see, have you seen Kill List? Oh, you, tell me about that you have, have to, to see it. it. Yeah. It's fucked right up. Yeah. Um.
We just announced our first non-horror film. We're actually five weeks away from going to camera on a film called Vendetta with Lionsgate and WWE starring the big show. We haven't released anyone else uh, in our cast, but uh, uh, it's a revenge flick. And I'm really excited about it because you can also kill a lot of people in revenge slasher films. Yeah, it's an action movie and yeah. it's more, I think it's more violent than any horror movie we've done so far. Yeah, there's, um, our dream is to do a big screen uh, adaptation of a graphic novel because we're such big comic book fans and we're actually up for one. We're not allowed to say what it is because I think they're going to do the announcement in a few days, but um they want to see that we can do more than just horror. And then now this action movie is a really good calling card. And the cool thing is that WWE believes in us so much. They're like, give them whatever they want. I'm like, oh, guys, thanks so much. <laughs> and they're so supportive and they're so on the same page that I really feel like Jen and I have grown so much as filmmakers because when you're working with people and you're all making different movies, it's a real struggle. It's You work five times harder. But when we're working with people and you all want to make the same movie, it's so much easier. I wouldn't say easier, but it's a pleasure. It's a treat, and it's that great collaboration, and that's what working with them is like. And if you've seen American Mary, we're really not into labels. I hate that I'm always called a female director. And you I are am, a female director. I am a female director, but no one says, wow, this male director. They always just say director, and I hate it saying young female directors. I'm not that young anymore. I'm 31. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I've made four feature films, countless shorts. By the time I'm 31, which is mo more than most men, a guy makes a horror movie, one horror movie or one film, he's automatically considered a director. But I hate that it's like, oh, there are young female horror directors. I am, but I'm also a director. I, I do probably like a Christmas movie just out of spite to be like, I could fucking make a Christmas movie. Well, the WWE has got, just did uh, Jingle All the Way too, and I was like, guys, Jingle All the Way too. Give it to me. Give it to me. And they're like, no, we hired a different director. I'm like, Christmas comedy. Obviously me and Jen. Next time, call us. Or Scrooge. Scrooge is the best fucking Christmas movie ever. The Bill Murray one. Have you seen totally, that? Totally. Yeah, totally. It's so good. That freaked totally. me out as a kid. But I thought that was my Christmas movie when I was yeah. a kid. Everyone else was watching The Grinch and, Grinch and shit like that. Yeah. It's about a detective who has his wife murdered and he goes to the prison where the murderer is to get revenge. And I think that's all From they've the said. From the press release. That's all they've said, and that's all that I know. That's also that's not all, all that, that, I that I know. It's written by, it's written by uh, Justin Shady, who is this really cool graphic novel guy, and he's such a smart writer, and he's Hungarian. I just yeah. absolutely love his stuff. He's, he's so cool. He's got so many scripts out there, so I don't know which other ones are going into production, but he's definitely a dude to watch. It's also going to be starring the big show, Paul White, who is famously a giant wrestler, but he's also an actor, and he's got pitch-perfect comedic timing. Yeah, he's a great actor. I'm really excited that we get to do this with him. We worked with uh, Glenn uh, Kane Jacobs on the last one. He was phenomenal. The thing with working with these professional wrestlers is... Uh, they get one take to do this in front of coliseums of thousands of people. So when you have them on set, they do it perfect in one take, and you're like, oh, fuck up, because they need to say cut and get you to do it a different way. But they're just so used to always being on. Because they yeah. have no choice. And they never break a character, <clears throat> no matter what you do to them. No, they're, they're <laughs> intense. They're so great. As soon as you say action, they go crazy. And the thing is, Jen, Glenn is such a gentle, sweet, intelligent, nice man. And then he becomes Jacob Goodnight, and we're all like, <gasps> You could kill us all. And then he goes back into, you know, normal, sweet, glad you're like, all right, he's acting. <laughs> <laughs> I would say never, ever, ever give up. You're going to be laughed at your entire life. Even now, I'm like, I'm going to do this. And people are like, Pff. and I'm like, watch me do it then. <laughs> <coughs> Robert Rodriguez's Rebel Without a Crew is such a great resource. It's a great book to read. Um, as well as Lloyd Kaufman's Make Your Own Damn Movie series. We're at a point though right now where uh, technology is at the, the level that anybody can make a movie. So oh, how yeah, are you going to, yeah. yeah, well, how are you going to stand out right now? Because everyone's doing the found footage thing. And I feel like a lot of filmmakers are just making the same movie or pieces of the same movie yeah. that you've already seen and putting together and being like, this is a movie. It's like, 
everybody's so unique. You need to put yourself in there. You have to put your own spin. Make a movie that you would want to see, but not only you'd want to see, you know? You need to ask yourself, is filmmaking the thing you want to do more than anything? If you'd also like to work with horses or teach or be a baker or being an actor even, go do that. Directing and filmmaking is a very fucking hard job. And if you're doing it to get rich and famous, you can do a lot of things that are a lot easier for more money. And you can do a lot easier things to go be famous. But if you, and if you're listening to this and you're like, no, but fuck, I have to do it. Unfortunately, you're like us. There's nothing else we could do. I've done so many things. I've had every job in my life. But we're professional clowns. We were professional clowns. We we're personal trainers. <clears throat> I mean, we worked with kids and horses. Every kind of job. Yeah. But if, if it's in you and you really love films and you love storytelling and characters, then yes, go be, go be a filmmaker and don't let anyone tell you anything else. But if you're thinking, oh, I'd like to get married and have kids someday, you're not going to get married and have kids someday as if you're a fucking serious director. My parents live five minutes away from me and I see them maybe twice a month and usually just to get my laundry from them. That's it. You don't have time for life. You don't Daughter have time for social. Year. You don't have time for anything except work. That's true. And if that sounds like, oh, I can do it, good fucking luck to you. Go do it. We've never come to Seattle and done a convention. This is our second horror convention after Texas Frightmare. And the people are so sweet and the guests are so wonderful. And there's conventions, and I won't mention names, that I've been to that I've never met the guy running it and I've never met the staff and nobody comes over and I'm sitting there with my knees together being like, I'm going to piss myself. I'm dehydrated. I'm starving. I'm pretty sure a few of these people are going to try and rape me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking desperately and for anybody <clears throat> that might work here and all I see is more seething rapists. But Crypticon is almost like nerd summer camp. You come back, come here and everyone's here because they're so passionate about the same things. I mean like, there's no such thing as a romantic comedy convention. Like, who the fuck would go to that? But horror conventions, and it's so cool because it's like the nerds have inherited the earth now. Because I remember comic books, wrestling, and horror movies didn't used to be so cool. And now look at TV. All comic yep. books, all horror movies, and wrestling still fucking the man. Even the vendors yeah. here are so nice. I've been at conventions where it's like they, they're like homeless people. They just so badly want to take your money, and they're like shoving things at you. Here they're just excited about what they have, and they're like, hey, did you see that? Well, check out this. Okay, have fun. See you later. And then so you're, chill. They're it's, just so nice, and they find stuff that you actually do want. So it's like, yeah, I do it's want It's so glass. hard not gotcha. to go broke here, man. Like, shopping is my Achilles heel. But this is a great place. I want to go to all the Crypticons. If Don't you remember?